Hey everyone, my name is Tim and today I'm going to be doing a review on the Dividend Stock Camping World Holdings. I'm going to be going over their stock performance, depending on the market. Obviously, the last week or two the market's been a little bit better, but during recession you can still make money doing options. So, I'll be going over that. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It does greatly help out my channel and I hope you have a great day. So Camping World Holdings. Thicker simple DWH as of the time of this recording is trading at $27.04. And over the last year, it is down 31.23%. And that is from July and early August of 2021 to late July, early August 2022. At the time of this recording, for year to date, it is down 33.63%. So from January 1st, 2022 till July 31st, 2022, it is down, and it, from the last six months, it is down 18.55%, which I know sounds kind of bad, but over the last month, it's been able to recover somewhat, it was up 28.4%, over the last five days, up a little bit less than 4%, and down 1.5% over the last day of trading. Now, Camping World Holdings does have a EPS or earnings per share of 4.97 and a PE ratio or price to earnings ratio of 5.44 which is pretty low and right now they have a forward looking dividend rate of $2.50 with a forward yield of 8.32% on the dividend section as you'll see it's listed shortly differently so I don't know yet if they are going to be cutting the dividend to lower the dividend rate or if it's just changing due to the price or other factors so if necessary i can always make an amendment to this video in the comment section as to what is causing that camping world holdings inc through its subsidiaries retails recreational vehicles that are known as rvs and related products and services it operates in two segments Good Sam Services and Plans, and RV and Outdoor Retail. The company provides a portfolio of services, protection plans, products, and resources in the RV industry. It also offers extended vehicle service contracts, roadside assistance plans, property and casualty insurance programs, travel assist, travel protection plans, and RV and outdoor related consumer shows, as well as produces various monthly and annual RV focused consumer magazines and operates the Coast to Coast Club. In addition, the company provides new and used RVs, vehicle financing, RV repair, and maintenance services, various RV parts, equipment, supplies, and accessories, which includes towing and hitching products, satellite and GPS systems, electrical and lighting products, appliances and furniture, and other products and collision repair services comprising fiberglass front and rear cap replacement, windshield replacement, interior remodel solutions, and paint and body work. Further, it offers equipment, gears, and supplies for camping, hunting, fishing, skiing, snowboarding, bicycling, skateboarding, and marine and water sports equipment and supplies, as well as operates Good Sam Club, a membership organization that offers savings on a range of products and services and provides co-branded credit cards. As of December 31st, 2021, the company operated through a network of approximately 187 retail locations in 40 states of the United States, and it serves customers throughout dealerships and online and e-commerce platforms. The company was founded in 1966 and is headquartered in Lincolnshire, Illinois. It has 12,834 employees. And like I said, I'm not 100% sure on what the actual dividend yield is going to be on either the 8% or the 9% that's showing here since both of them say they're the forward dividend yield. But the annual payout shouldn't change too much at this point. Uh, right now, it's a forward paying $2.50 per share. They have a 21.02% payout ratio, which is a very good ratio considering that allows them to continue to grow their company and innovate and still be able to pay out their shareholders. They have a five-year growth rate of 69.67%, so that's a great growth rate. And they have grown their dividend over the last two years straight. So that equals, since they pay out quarterly, 
at 62 and a half cents per share per quarter. I know it says 63 cents, but Staking Alpha doesn't do the up to the third decimal. They only go to two decimals, so they round up. And since this last one had an ex dividend date of June 13th, the next one will be around September, the middle of September, somewhere. So, looking at TradingView, which I like looking at just as a simplified version of being able to look at their financials and other information, it's just easier for me to read in an easy graph. So, this goes back annually to 2017. They had a revenue of $4.28 billion, a net income of $29.85 million, with a profit margin of 0.7%. Then in 2018, it went to $4.79 billion, with a net income of $10.40 million, and a profit margin of 0.22%. Now in 2019, their profit margin did suffer, as well as their net income. They had a revenue, though, of $4.89 billion, a net income of negative 60.59 million and a negative 1.24 percent profit margin now in 2020 surprisingly they did better they had a revenue of 5.45 billion a net income of 122.34 million and a 2.25 percent profit margin and in 2021 they had a 6.91 billion revenue 278.46 million in net income and a profit margin of 4.03. Now, for quarterly, it goes back to quarter one of 2021. They had a revenue of 1.46 billion, net income of 62.32 million, and a profit margin of 4%. Quarter two, it went up in revenue to 2.06 billion, a net income of 109 million. And their profit margin went up to 5.3 percent. Quarter three, their revenue did drop just a little bit to 1.92 billion. Their net income was 79.7 million, and their profit margin dropped to 4.16 percent. In quarter four, their revenue dropped to 1.38 billion. Their net income dropped to 27.25 million, and their profit margin dropped to 1.98 percent. In quarter one, it did stabilize this year a little bit. Their revenue went up to $1.66 billion, their net income to $44.73 million, and their profit margin rose to 2.69%. Their next earnings call is on August 2nd, which is going to be on Tuesday. So we'll find out shortly what that's going to be like. Their earnings since quarter 2, 2021, you can see they had a actual of $2.51 million and an estimated 2.4. So they had a 4.71 increase above what the estimated earnings would be. And then in quarter three, they had a surprise 9% increase because they had an estimated 1.81 million and an actual 1.98 million. Now, quarter four did drop somewhat. They only had a 6.44% increase. They had an estimate of 0 0.85 and a actual 0 0.90 million. Now, they did have a surprise loss of 13.21% in quarter one of this year. They had an estimate of 1.32 and an actual 1.15. And like I said, their next earnings call is on the 2nd. So they have an estimate of 1.78. And we'll see how that turns out when they make their earnings call on Tuesday. So now here on Robinhood Options, like I said in the intro, this is a stock that I use a lot. For doing covered calls because it pays pretty well in their premium as you can see here pretty good up till about the here the $24 mark when it drops off a little bit but they have pretty good premium for selling put and also decent premium for selling calls this is an extra way to make some good income you can still cash secured put and collect income from that and then if the stock price drops below the strike price over here on the left that's the price that you're saying you're willing to buy the shares at so if it goes below that then you are obligated to buy 100 shares that's what each contract is for one contract equals 100 shares and you buy it at that strike price 
So after that, you can start selling covered calls at your strike price or above. So that way you can profit when it comes back up again. And if it does, for some reason, like say we really have a hard recession coming up and the stock just keeps dropping. One reason I like Camping World and other dividend stocks that I do cover calls on is even if it drops and I'm not able to make any kind of profit by selling calls, all I have to do is be patient. I will still get the dividends payments. So for each contract, you get 100 shares. So that $2.50 per year is $250. Worst comes to worst, I have to wait until the stock price comes back up. So cover calls near my cost basis. That dividend could either help lower my cost basis or it could just help tie me over until I'm able to get more funds and able to lower my cost basis by buying or selling more puts in this case. And that would help lower my cost basis if it gets assigned. And if not, I still make extra income on lowering my cost basis that way. Hey everyone, Feature Tim here. Just want to give a quick update. Uh, this is August 1st. And this morning, when the markets opened, I saw an opportunity to make 1.6% return on investment uh, by selling two options contracts on Camping World. So that's what I did. I sold two at $40 a piece. So I got $80 with a collateral of $5,000 total for both contracts, which came to a 1.6% return on investment for just one week. As you can see here, it expires on August 5th. And it is a $25 strike price, and it is currently trading at over $27.50 still. Even if it gets put into the money and I get assigned shares, that's still good for me because I will still be selling calls then, and also I'll be getting the dividends from the stock. So that will be about $62.50 for every contract or $135. For both contracts every three months. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It's free and I hope you have a good day and good luck in the market.